Hello, guys. It's been about two weeks since uh, uh, Trump won the presidency. He's uh, the president-elect now. A week before um, Trump won, I, I posted a video saying I knew positively that Trump would win. Um, I've actually known that for about a year. Um, I've invested a lot of money on some markets, like predicted, uh, which I have now won, and uh, and also discussed on those forums. Uh, I think it's a, a discussed forum, and explained to people that I knew Trump was going to be the president all along, and people would ask me how I knew that, and so I thought I'd put this video together to answer those questions once and for all. How did I know that Trump was going to be the, the president? The things that have led up to that, and the things that I think will happen going forward. Okay, the first thing I want to say right up front is I'm not a prophet. I haven't talked to God and have no special power to see the future. Okay? Um, there's plenty of false prophets on the internet that can tell you everything that's going to happen for the next 25 years. Um, I am not telling you that. Also, I'm not just looking at Revelation as a single source. I'm looking at multiple sources of information. I'm a coder. I'm used to solving complex problems and breaking them down to simple ones. I did that by figuring out the Call of Duty 2 ranking system. And I'm a Christian, but I'm more of a Christian ancient astronaut theorist. I believe there's a single theory that explains everything from evolution to Christianity. And I believe ultimately that will be what is the real religion some, you know, 27 years from now. And I just made up that, that number, by the way. Um, so what I'm going to look at uh, is the first four seals of the Revelations, Book of Revelations, uh, called the Four Horsemen of the, po uh, the Apocalypse. It's described in the last book of the New Testament of the Bible, called the Book of John, of Jesus Christ to John at Patmos at 6118. And what I'm going to get into are that most of the translations that you're currently preached on, that are currently preached or that are written about, in terms of the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, as a series of calamities, these are incorrect. Um, and what they're, what they're translated right now, the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, are a series of calamities such as war, pestilence, and famine, and these things would signal the end times. Unfortunately, mankind has been uh, struggling with famine and war its entire existence. So these would not be predictive of anything in terms of the future if there is such a thing as a future, and I don't really think there is a such a thing as a future. I think the past, the present, and future are all happening at the same time. It's just man's inability to um, correctly perceive time. So what we have to do is we have to look at revelations. We need to toss aside what it, it currently says or what we've been currently told that it says via translation. So we have to kind of use our own brains here. And uh, I'm going to use Wikipedia just as the common definitions of or translations of what we see in reference to the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. But you can use uh, just about anything on the internet. Um, they all pretty much say the, the same general thing. Okay. The first thing um, you have to understand is we have to correct these translations because um, there's two things happening in, in the book of Revelations. One is these are not really calamities. They're leaders. Okay? And their leadership or their, their um, events in office are what the calamities are describing. And, um, and so really these are, are, there are four major leaders which are called horsemen and they ride their horses to, uh, to uh, the uh, tribulation period. And these four horsemen, the, even though they ride their horses, you can only direct a horse in a certain way. I mean, you can't you can't make a horse jump off a cliff, for instance. You're not gonna you're not gonna lead a horse into uh, you know into a cage of snakes. I mean, they they somewhat the horse decides where it's gonna go and where it's not gonna go. Their their the ultimate destination you have when you're riding a horse is somewhat influenced by the terrain, and that's why in Revelations we describe these leaders as, or the reason these leaders are described as horsemen. Okay, and the other thing that the reason they're described uh, this way is because it, it, it was well known in history, um, uh, you know, even at the time of uh, 
uh, of the writing of the Bible, the, the history of uh, the tr use of the Trojan horse, which is a double entendre to mean, okay, so you, you, it, it looks like that the horse is a present, but inside is actually a, um, you know, is, is, a, is an army. So uh, it it's, uh, means that, you know, the looks can be deceiving. Um, of these first three horsemen, they're really, these leaders are really U.S. presidents, okay? Uh, the fourth horseman, I do not believe is a U.S. president. It's possible that he is, but I do not believe that to be the case. Um, and this final leader, this fourth horseman, is, is, is probably responsible for the tribulation and rapture. The other thing you got to understand about Revelation is there's the opening of these seals, okay? And these seals seem like they're arbitrary, the use of, a, of the seal as an arbitrary uh, thing, but it's really uh, uh, a coded message to indicate the, not just the timing, but the names of these leaders or horsemen. And the opening of these seals um, really is in reference to the character count of the names and uh, not and not and actually by using that you can un unwind the real true timing um, that's not necessarily the timing that's in the Bible um, the reason uh, you've got the use of the the word seals is because originally when you sign something in historically you would you know melt some wax and you'd You'd have a ring made out of wood or, or metal that you would press into the um, into the uh, wax that would uh, be your seal, and that would basically be your name, you know, uh, and signature on the document. So uh, um, that's how, why we have the use of the word seal. First horseman that we come to actually in the Bible in Revelations is the white horseman. It says, Then I saw when the Lamb broke one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying, as with a voice of thunder, Come, I looked, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. Revelation 6, 1.2. Now this is trans translated commonly to mean the sin of conquest or uh, war and conquest. Uh, other people have interpreted to mean this is pestilence infectious disease and plague, um, sort of being the opposite of white. Um, Billy Graham uh, interprets this really as, as evil, as the Antichrist. Um, other people have interpreted it as, as to mean triumph or prosperity and health in the political Roman body in terms of believing that Revelations is really a, uh, an historical record of uh, of Rome rather than a, a future uh, event that's going to happen to mankind. The White Horseman really refers to George Bush and all of the clues in Revelations to this being George Bush are present. George Bush basically was a leader of the world that was responsible for conquest. And that conquest ultimately is step one that leads us to the tribulation period. His bow was the smart weapon, the ability to hit some something, um, hit the bullseye, you know, from a long, far away distance and hit it exactly. Um, and that's that's the idea of, of the bow. Um, in terms of the crown, um, George Bush was very fond of hats. He, he wore hats very frequently. You see actually a couple of pictures here where he's wearing a white hat. Um, he's got a white helmet coming uh, when he uh, landed on the aircraft carrier uh, to claim victory in Iraq the first time. Uh, the press actually called him King George um, and gave him a crown in, in terms of calling him that. But the white hat or the white horse was, is a reference to the the idea of the hero in the old western flicks, uh, the the person wearing the white hat, the Texas cowboy wearing the white hat, and and George Bush being from Texas and being a cowboy and basically having that whole whole concept of, of the white hat. And in fact, his foreign policy was actually called in, uh, cowboy dis diplomacy. In um, 
like I said, in the in the in Revelations, the order of the horsemen appear uh, as as the seals are open in the order of white, red, black, and green, or pale. The pale horsemen being the last one. However, the real order in time is based upon the character count of their name, which is also means seal, and not the order in Revelations. So um, the white horseman is position number one in the Bible. He is also, though, historically, the first um, in terms of uh, step one towards the tribulation period. It just so happens that his name is ten characters, and ten, one zero, marks the beginning of the character count for the first seal. Okay, and that will make more sense here in a second uh, because we have George Bush at ten characters. Um, and that sort of is how you, you, you know, it's basically, it's going to go up and count. Next horseman um, that I'd like to talk to you about is a black horseman, the third horseman. I'm actually going to step over the red horseman temporarily, um, and I'll explain to you why in a second. When he broke the third seal, I heard the third living creature saying, Come, I looked and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard something like a voice in the center of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius. But do not damage the oil and the, ro and the wine. Now this is commonly translated to being famine, because the, you know, the horseman is basically weighing, um, uh, and, and, and that's assuming the scales are weighing you know, the bread or the money uh, for, for purchasing the bread. And um, and uh, the wheat, uh, which is what you use to make the the bread, and um, others have interpreted this these scales to be really the scales of justice as as sort of the Lord as a lawgiver, um, but uh, the uh, the other thing is that close to the end where it says but uh, where it measures the wheat against money a denarius being a, a form of money and uh, and it says do not damage the oil and the wine. Is, is suggestive that even though we have sort of this famine or poorness of the food against money, we actually um, uh, make sure that the wealthy are not damaged, those being uh, the, the wealthy being delineated by the holders of the oil and, and the wine. Now, the black horseman is clearly Barack Obama. Barack Obama was the first black president. Um, his scales of justice uh, refer exactly to him. Uh, he was a former law professor, a former constitutional law professor. Um, his administration had lots of legal challenges like IRS, uh, Hillary. Um, he, had, uh, he was accused of judicial overreach, having a, a vacant Supreme Court now he has. Um, he w actually went on an apology tour for the U.S., and he's kind of going on an apology tour now, uh, apologizing for the fact that the electorate has 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 uh, voted in Trump, and and this is this apology tour is basically for injustice. It's it's basically justifying to the world these U.S. policy injustices or the fact that you know that U.S. policy in the past has been unjust. Um, then there's the idea of everyone must pay their fair share, which is determined by him, the lawgiver, okay, um, which goes back to the legal uh, indication of, of justice. The other thing about his administration um, had to do with the 1% versus the 99%. That's the poor versus the rich. Despite under Obama, the poor actually became much poorer and the rich became much richer, the stock market being at all-time record highs currently. I think it just made a record today, in fact. Um, and then there's the, the, the thing that's risen lately about black, injust black injustice via Black Lives Matter. So his administration has been sort of centered around law, injustice, and the poor and the rich, exactly like is very plainly plainly delineated in Revelation for the Black Horseman. Now, he's position three in the Bible, but his character counts for his name are 12 characters. And the reason that is true is because Obama was sworn into office with his legal name, Barry Sartoro. 
Okay, his legal birth certificate at the time that he took office was Barry Sartoro. He later changed his name, um, but he was born as Barack Obama, but his mother remarried to, uh, a gentleman by the name of Lolo Sartoro, who legally renamed Obama to Barry Sartoro and, uh, and, and to his, his last name. Now, unfortunately, he was, a step, he was a stepfather, so I don't believe Obama ever accepted him as his father, which is pretty typical when you have a stepfather. Um, so he continued to use Obama, uh, which was the name given to him by his real father, which he probably, I'm sure, felt that's his real name. And uh, so he went to college. He did everything under that name of Barack Obama. And that's the whole reason why there was the there was sort of whole controversy about the fact that he had no college transcripts. There were no t college transcripts because they were all under Barry Satoro. Okay, I'm sure there's plenty of college transcripts under that name. Um, and the reason he couldn't uh, give out his, his birth certificate at first is because it was it wasn't correct for his name. Um, now, it, it was never that he, he wasn't born in the United States. He was clearly born in Hawaii, but his name had to be changed legally to, uh, to Barack Obama, which he later did, and that's why he was able to release his birth certificate sometime later. Um, so if you count out Barry Sartoro, that's 12 characters, and uh, so we had, uh, we had George Bush at 10, then we have the Red Horseman at 11, which I skipped over. And then we had uh, Barry Sartoro, a.k.a. Barack Obama, at position 3 at 12 characters. That brings us now back to the second horseman, the Red Horseman. When he broke the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come, and another, a red horse, went out. And to him who sat on it, it was granted to take peace from the earth and that men would slay one another, and a great sword was given to him. Revelation 6, 3.4. This is commonly translated to being war, but unlike the conquest-type war, it's been suggested that it's more like a civil-type war. Now, the actual translation of the red is that it's more of a fiery red, indicative of blood. Um, and uh, and uh, possibly that red is indicative of a bloodshed. Um, the sword held upright, some have suggested, is, is the same as a sort of a declaration of war. In fact, the Red Horseman is actually Donald Trump. Um, and here are the linkages. Donald Trump has a fiery red temperament. He's, he's a Scottish descent. His hair actually has a red tinge to it, even though when he was young, it was a, he had a kind of a brown reddish, mostly brownish hair, but his, his, his gray, blondish type hair now takes on a red tint. He actually wears orangish, reddish makeup. There's some pictures with him with uh, wearing that sort of uh, fake tan look. Um, you've got the red Trump card suite, indicative of his name, Trump. Uh, supposedly during the campaign, he had links to the Reds. The, the Russian Reds, often a, another name for Russia. Um, his, the slogan he made famous in TV is, you're fired, fired being red. Um, he was originally a Democrat, and he switched to the all-red Republican Party, and currently the all-red Republican Party is in power, which hasn't happened in a long time. Um, his term, just as his election uh, has, has been, will embody the term and and the concept of civil war. If you had to sort of summarize his term, just as we've, we've summarized the, the conquest of uh, presidency of, of George Bush and the uh, injustice slash poor versus the rich in, in, um, in Obama. So he has this civil war going on within himself, and, and he's even setting up his cabinet to be somewhat of a, uh, of, of a civil war. You've got... Uh, the uh, businessman and his businesses versus the politician and his and the politics, kind of at civil war. You've got some that have said there's this good Trump versus bad Trump. You never know which one is gonna is gonna speak up or say something. You've got the civil war within the Republican Party that he's helped to start, 
and a civil war between the citizens and his government, which is basically how he won an election. But you also have this civil war and unrest uh, that's, that's come out from his presidency already in the U.S., and as the result of that from Europe and that Brexit, which was a somewhat of a civil war. But the truth is this civil war will widen in his term to take, on, uh, take over it, the Middle East, um, which is already in the civil war, but that civil war is going to widen, and that ultimately leads to the tribulation. Now, the great sw sword described in, the, um, uh, in uh, that revelation uh, is related to his tongue. And, uh, and uh, supposed, you know, he goes on Twitter and, 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 and uh, Proverbs 12, 18 says, The words of the reckless pierce like swords. The Bible uh, uh, likens the, the fact that you can, what you say can be a sword in terms of damaging other people. And then I've linked to an article that actually was put on Wall Street Journal that says literally the title of that says Senate Democrats have given Trump a sword. Now, the position of, uh, of Trump in the Bible is position two because his character count in his name is 11 characters, okay? So the seal is opened by the name or the character count, and um, not the position in the Bible, necessarily. So I've listed a couple. i got a picture here with, uh, with him uh, on the red horse, and uh, his, his trump card, and, and him, uh, him with a sword. So the next presidency, or the presidency of, of Donald Trump, which I believe, and this is not directly in Revelations, but it's stuff that I believe I know from other books and other translations of other things, um, is that he re repositions America for World War III, and he builds up the army of the United States and of Jesus, which ultimately we're, we're talking about a war between good versus evil. That's the World War III. That's where we're headed. Um, I believe the U.S. is on the good side. And, you know, versus the evil, which is this radical Islam. I don't know that for sure. I can't for sure say that the United States is on the good side. It could be the completely the other way around. Um, that is part of the decision that every Christian and person on earth must make. That is what the tribulation is about. It's basically making that decision, choosing between good or evil. Um, Donald Trump will have two terms, um, so he will run again and he will win again. He comes in uh, surprisingly and only mildly popular, but he's going to become more popular in office, and ultimately by the end of his presidency, and by the, after he leaves, he will become very popular. He will be the last major U.S. president ruler of the free world to serve out a whole term before America loses the world superpower mantle. So there will be other leaders that follow. The next president after Trump, after eight years, will not serve out, I don't believe will serve out a whole term. And he definitely will not be the leader of the free world for his whole term. Uh, that's because during Trump's presidency, there will be, he will preside over a widening Middle East civil war that ultimately leads to the new Persian Muslim Empire or the Ottoman Muslim Empire. They will be equipped with nuclear weapons. Those nuclear weapons were given to them by President Obama, and who was the second step to, to tribulation, um, by, uh, the, given to them by the, uh, the Iranian nuclear deal. And that, mi that widening Middle East uh, between I basically Persia is encompassing Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Turkey. That is basically ground zero for World War III. Now, even though George Bush sort of put us on the path for tribulation through conquest, and uh, uh, um, Obama uh, can, uh, uh, put us on an even steeper path by allowing a civil war to basically start up in the Middle East and uh, to keep us uh, at the United States at bay so that we could be just uh, and fair, um, Donald Trump does not 
stop Iran from getting the nuke. So he continues us on a path towards the tribulation. Okay, now that brings us to the last horseman, the fourth horseman, um, sometimes referred to as the pale horseman. I'm going to refer to it as the green horseman, which well, I will explain later. When the Lamb broke the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come, I looked, and behold, an ashen horse, and he who sat on it had the name Death, and Hades was followed with him. Authority was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword and with famine and with pestilence and by the wild beasts of the earth. Um, and I think wild beasts is about as close as you can get to wild being nuclear and beasts being weapons, nuclear weapons of the earth. Um, this is Revelation 6, 7.8, translated commonly as um, sort of the horse, first of all, this is the horse, the only, the only horse that's actually given a name, death, followed by Hades, followed by hell. Um, and he's often depicted uh, carrying a, a Sith, uh, which is a sickle with a long handle, uh, basically the, gr the Grim Reaper, what the Grim Reaper has, and, um, and of course followed by hell. Um, now, the translation from the, um, from the Greek has the word chloros, um, and that's very much like the Greek word uh, trans uh, use of the word Chloro, chlorophyll, um, being a green color uh, for chloros. Um, so even though some have translated it, this to mean pale or ashen or pale green, it's best to uh, describe the color of this horse as green, chlorophyll green. And finally, this horse will have a power over a quarter of the earth and I think will kill a third of the earth's population you know, by the use of uh, the sword or weapons, by use of famine, by use of uh, uh, chemical warfare and uh, biological warfare, and by the wild beasts, the nuclear weapons of the earth. Now, who is this green horseman? And the answer is, I do not know who this green horseman is yet. We're still eight plus years away. All I know is this green horseman will embody the color green, chlorophyll-like green. It just so happens that the color, glor the color green is the official color of Islam and radical Islam. i show you a couple pictures there um, uh, of that color green in action. Um, most of the flags of the Middle East contain this green. This green is in the Iranian flag. It's in the Iraqi flag. In fact, the entire Saudi Arabia flag is this color green with some white in it. Um, this, this fourth horseman will start the seven-year tribulation period. He and his followers will kill a third of the world's population and rule a quarter of the world. Um, they will come after Trump, who will be the last U.S. president of the free, will, free world. This person will rule the tribulation and they will bring about the rapture. Um, the order of, and position of this Bible, of, of the person, in, uh, this horseman in the Bible is the fourth. So we know this person not only will embody the color green and of death, but they will also have 13 characters in their name. Um, and in my opinion, they will be the Antichrist reborn. In my opinion, the Antichrist has already come and gone. Um, in fact, uh, uh, a third of the population already carries the mark of the beast, mark being another word for seal slash name, because it was often said when you signed a document, um, you know, beside putting your, 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 your seal there, you would also put your mark, which could be just as much as a, just an X, which be basically your name. So a third of the population already ca carry the name of the Antichrist. Um, candidates that might include that, there are some 13 character names that already are in the landscape that already embody this color green. One is Hassan Rouhani, the Iranian president. You got Basa al-Assad, the Syrian president. Um, those are both in the Persian uh, Persian Empire and they're in the middle of, the, uh, of, a, of where the civil war is. You've got uh, the Turkish president, Erdogan, 
Turkey will be heavily involved in this, this civil war. Um, in fact, they're the linchpin. Um, once they fall, that's when uh, we're at the end. Um, but it could likely be someone not yet or barely known on the world, st world stage. We, just, we don't know who it is yet. It's just a little bit too far away. There might be somebody that comes to power in the next eight years that has these 13 characters. But it will be obvious to you, having watched this video at this point, that this person will embody this color green. They will um, have 13 characters. They will be right smack in the middle of the Civil War. They will probably lead the Civil War and lead lead the, the Civil War to a conclusion that is likely a new empire. That empire will go on to lead us into the Tribulation period and ultimately the Rapture, which occurs during the Tribulation period. I don't know if it occurs before the Tribulation or close to the end, um, but that sort of... Uh, um, where we're headed. Um, I'm going to leave you there uh, and uh, uh, I'll decide whether I want to put any more videos up. I think uh, this is it. Uh, most people are going to think I'm crazy and this is, uh, I don't know what I'm talking about, which is fine, but I felt it my duty to sort of tell people what I know that I believe, even though I'm not a prophet, that has somewhat been um, you know, inspired some information upon some cosmic level that has been given to me the powers or keys to un unsolve some of these things. Take take it for what you, what you want. You can ignore it. Um, it's up to you.